Here's the deal. Some people look at this chart and say, that's a social drinker. Other people look at that chart and say, there's no way I could possibly consume that much alcohol. And that's my point. The BAC chart is nothing more than a hypothetical guide. You know what you can do? If you could just post right in your entrance to your establishments, a great big poster of the BAC chart. You got scales there. Your guests walk in, they step on the scales, you walk over, look how many drinks they can have, write that number to post the note, slap it on their head, send them on in. Because other things will factor the observancy rate of alcohol that the BAC chart does not consider, such as were they drinking before they came in? How fast are they drinking? What are they drinking? How has that drink been mixed? Is it a warm or is it a cold beverage? Are they hungry? Are they dieting? What is their emotional state? Your emotions will change the chemistry of your body at any given point in time during the day. People are tired, depressed, they will come down with the feel the effects of the alcohol faster than someone who's in a very good mood and maybe very angry. Tolerance, that's huge. There's some people out there who are professional alcoholics. I personally know some people who could literally take a breathalyzer, blow them into a breathalyzer, you'd be looking at them going, how are you standing? I know some people, one drink, good night, Irene. Medication and alcohol. Obviously, pain pills and alcohol, not so much. But then you break it down to something as simple as over-the-counter cold medicine. You ever had a bad head cold? You take that cold medicine, get through the day, and after work, you have yourself a drink, and you're thinking, wow, I used to drink like this more often. It's much cheaper. Drugs and alcohol. Cocaine and alcohol can increase the heart rate and affects coordination and attitude. Marijuana and alcohol slows reaction time considerably. Caffeine and alcohol creates a false sense of sobriety and insomnia. Energy drinks and alcohol are a dangerous mix. Medical and scientific research suggests that combining alcohol and stimulants found in energy drinks such as caffeine, guaraná, and taurine might increase the rate of alcohol-related injury and risky behavior. When people drink alcohol in energy drinks, it makes them feel less drunk than they are. With this false sense of sobriety, they're more likely to take risks they would not normally do. A leading study by the Wake Forest University School of Medicine and researchers at the University of Florida found students who consumed alcohol with energy drinks were twice as likely to be injured, twice as likely to require medical attention, and twice as likely to ride with an intoxicated driver. They have a tendency to leave the bars later at night and consume more alcohol than normal. Not only does combining alcohol and energy drinks cause behavior that is outside of the scope of the drinker, but health concerns are another factor to be aware of. For example, in Philadelphia, a 19-year-old young man with chest pains and shortness of breath had a heart attack usually associated with a cocaine overdose. Because of this, you might want to limit the amount of cocktails you serve that are mixed with energy drinks. Amphetamines and alcohol creates forgetfulness, causing the person to take more of the drug, which can cause an overdose. Over-the-counter sleeping pills combined with alcohol can cause death. Club drugs mixed with small doses of alcohol can cause death and have been used as a date rape drug, such as GHB, ecstasy, ketamine, and rehypnol. These four can cause an individual to lose control of muscles, drowsiness, and loss of memory. The above four mentioned drugs have all been used as a date rape drug, but alcohol is the number one date rape drug because various studies have determined that over 50% of the men who commit rape are under the influence of alcohol, while over 50% of the women raped were under the influence of alcohol. Alcohol poisoning. Alcohol depresses nerves that control involuntary actions such as breathing and the gag reflex, which prevents choking. A fatal dose of alcohol will eventually stop these functions. It is common for someone who consumed excessive alcohol to vomit, since alcohol is an irritant to the stomach. There's also the danger of choking on vomit, which could cause death by asphyxiation in a person who is not conscious because of intoxication. Here are the signs and symptoms of alcohol poisoning. Mental confusion, stupor, coma, or the person cannot be roused. Vomiting, slow breathing, fewer than eight breaths per minute. Irregular breathing, 10 seconds or more between breaths. Hypothermia, which would be low blood temperature. They'll have a bluish skin color or a paleness. If you suspect someone has alcohol poisoning, know the danger signals. Do not wait for all symptoms to be present. Do not leave a person who passes out to sleep it off. Be aware that a person who has passed out might die. If there is any suspicion of an alcohol overdose, call 911 for help. Do not try to guess the level of drunkenness. If they look like they need help, they need help. If alcohol poisoning goes untreated, well, the victim may choke on his or her own vomit. The breathing slows, becomes irregular, or stops. Heart beats irregularly, or stops. The hypothermia may occur. Hypoglycemia, too little blood sugar, leads to seizures. Untreated severe dehydration from vomiting can cause seizures, permanent brain damage, or death. 
Note, binge drinking, the consumption of five or more drinks in a row by men or four or more drinks in a row by women within a two-hour period is especially dangerous because the victim can ingest a fatal dose of alcohol before becoming unconscious. Also, you need to be aware of those with disabilities. It can be very embarrassing to both parties. Examples of this could be somebody who had a stroke victim, diabetics, injuries of some kinds, a surgery, cerebral palsy, multiple sclerosis. What you as a server want to do, you want to slow up how fast the alcohol can actually absorb into that person's bloodstream. There's three ways it can actively participate in this. One is with time. You simply pace your service. They don't get that drink unless you bring it to them, let them finish the drink, remove the old glass, then you can bring them out a fresh cocktail. Two things happen there. One, you as a server, you're pacing how fast they can get the alcohol. And number two, that's a form of better service. When you drop that check, the end of that dining experience, that check and a couple glasses of water is all that needs to be left on that table. All the other flatware, plateware, stemware needs to be pulled. The second way to slow up the alcohol absorbency rate is with get your guests to drink something besides alcohol. An alternate beverage, juices, sodas, coffee, water's your best ally for the pure simple fact they will drink it. Have you ever noticed when somebody begins to get intoxicated, they'll drink, they drink faster? Well, it's because they're dehydrated, they want a fluid. Give them water, they will drink that water. Remind them, you'll feel better tomorrow. It's a trick. And the third, and one of the most effective ways to slow up the alcohol absorbency rate is with food. When you get people to eat food, when they're consuming alcohol, three really good things are going to happen. One, you as a server, you're going to increase your check average, which is gonna increase your what? Try it, your tip. Number two, it's good for you working at, you're selling product. And number three, it will keep that person sober longer by slowing up the absorbency rate.